Interested in audio? Interested in film? Interested in audio for film? Well, look no further because you're in the right spot. Today, I'm going to let you in on some industry secrets that I've learned from a professional sound mixer, boom op, and post-production sound designer, this guy. I'll go over some of the most crucial pointers for successful audio recording for film sets so you can have some insider knowledge that will set you apart from beginners in this category. There are two primary ways of capturing dialogue on set and that is through a boom microphone and a lavalier microphone. First let's talk about live recordings. Lavaliers are small wired mics talents where to pick up dialogue that a boom would not be able to capture as easily. Some instances where you would need a lav are tight spaces, wide shots with dialogue, multiple talking roles, and the ability to to use multiple booms for that. Proper lav placement is one of the keys for successful lav recordings. Don't put on the lav too far away from the talent's mouth. Always put it in a place that points directly at the actor's mouth. Don't cover the mic with your lav tape or else you'll get scratchy noise. Or with many layers of clothing if possible. This is a properly placed mic. Notice how there's no rustling going on. Even when I move, it's minimal. This is an example of an improperly placed mic. Notice how when I move, because it's not on me, it's on fabric. You can hear it rubbing against. Make sure you also know the type of mic that you're using for a scene, like if you'll need an Omni or a cardioid mic, just know what the scene calls for. Never assume your talent is comfortable with you micing them up. Always ask first if it is okay that you fasten the mic to whatever you're attaching it to and always tell them what you're doing as you're doing it. Especially if you're a man micing up a woman, try and always have another female present when micing up the female talent for everyone's comfort. Always provide them an option to put on the mic themselves, especially if they have to take off a layer of clothing to put the mic pack and the wire on. If it is not possible to hide a lab or a boom, consider cutting the shot from the short film and never working with that director again. No, in all seriousness, you'll just have to use a plant mic or Foley or ADR. The second type of film audio is that which comes from a boom. During pre-production, if possible, always location scout when the camera and executive team are location scouting so that you know what the environment sounds like so you can plan for the shot. If you go somewhere that has loud AC, maybe you can get in touch with the property manager to have it shut off while filming takes place. You can always try and protest for a different shot if some audio issues can't be fixed, i.e. highway traffic, natural sounds that can't be shut off like waterfalls or volcanoes. While your request is unlikely to be taken seriously, at least you can tell them I told you so in editing when they can't understand why the audio is unusable. Moving on to boom tips for production, know the script. Read all the dialogue scenes and the movements of the actors so that you can anticipate the scene while you're booming once the camera's rolling and it's your time to shine. Despite the camera department getting as many takes as they want, once the sound department asks for just one more take, it's the end of the world. So make sure that you know when each actor moves or talks to know when to place the mic. This also allows you to prep your equipment. If you know a scene will be outdoors, you can prepare by getting a dead cat, windscreen, to limit wind noise. Never assume you'll be fine without one because mics can pick up more than you'll notice in the moment. And it will be unfixable and you will die. Moving on. This is a windshield. Dead cat, very nice and soft. I would touch it, but it will make the audio. This is the shotgun mic with just the pop filter on. This is the shotgun mic with nothing on. 
Getting as close to your subject while being out of the frame is the thin line that you will be required to balance for the duration of production. The last thing you want is for scripty to yell boom and shot after a take because then all eyes will be on you and you will die again. You will work with your DP by dipping the boom into the shot and then slowly moving it out of the frame until the DP tells you you're out. And you'll need to know where that boundary of the frame is for the duration of the shot. The last most important production tip for new boom operators is to handle your boom with care during a take. Handling noise from the boom pole and the wiring is a real thing, so you will need to avoid unnecessary hand noises on your equipment by finding a comfortable position to hold the boom pole before the take starts, so you're not repositioning mid-take and adding noise to your recording. The last tip I'm gonna give you should be a no-brainer, but is often overlooked. Organization is key to getting hired back. Always pay attention to what scene and take you're on and label your files accordingly. The editor will love you in post. This also helps you in the moment to label false takes or if in the odd chance you think you hit record but didn't actually, it'll let you know in the moment if you need to request another take. Now don't take all of this from me. Take it from someone who is actually in the industry and is actually doing these things and actually gave me these tips and he gets hired back. So if you do all this, you'll be like him and get jobs. All right.